everybody. This is Joseph Propati. I'm the designer of Dungeon Hack, the dice game. And in this next instructional video, I'm going to cover traps. Now, there's been a lot of discussion and questions on how you resolve a trap, um, how do the traps uh, function, how do they move uh, down the side of the board. And I thought to make it all clear, I would uh, put this video together and just cover the concept of traps. Um, how they come into the game, how you roll action dice to resolve them, and if you don't resolve them, um, what can happen. So, whenever you start a turn and you've placed a new dungeon tile, you'll see on the dungeon tile what looks like a little bear trap. Whenever you see this, you'll draw one trap card from the tra uh, trap card deck. There are 10 traps um, and they have uh, a lot of different uh, effects and um, action dice that are needed to resolve them. But whenever you lay your tile down and you see that symbol, then you'll be drawing one trap card. Now the, what happens is once you've drawn a trap card, you'll have um, two things that you'll see on the upper right corner. You'll either have a number, which will uh, dictate which number you'll put it against on the encounter side. So if it has a two, you'll put it next to where the two is. If it has an asterisk, like this one, then that will go up on the five. And when you see a trap that has an asterisk, this means that this will stay in play. It doesn't move down. And every turn, it has an effect against the group until it's resolved. The ones that have numbers are basically how many rounds it takes for the trap to either affect the party or how much time you have to resolve it. So a lot of these traps that have either one or two um, take one or two rounds before it affects the party. The ones with the asterisks are the ones that will stay in the game and will last until uh, the requirements of the action dice um, are used to resolve the trap. So, in an example, let's say we have a fire and arrow trap. So you you moved into the dungeon room and you've drawn a trap, one trap card, and you get a fire and arrow trap. Now, first thing you notice, like I said, is you have in the upper right corner the number of rounds and where it will line up on the encounter side. You have um, the name of it, the description, and in, in essence for this one it's if not activated or halted, one damage to both frontline characters will occur. So if you do not resolve this card before it moves off to the edge of the board, this is the um, results of this trap. To resolve the trap, you need to roll on your action dice either two Thief Hoods or if you're playing with uh, the original character as a fighter, you need two shields. Or if you're going to play with the Paladin, then you need two Paladin shields. So if you had, let's say, if I can get a shield. If two action dice that you roll were two shields, you could use these two to resolve this trap. And once it's resolved, you take the dice off, and then this would go on the bottom of the trap deck or into the trap discard pile. If you only had one shield and you couldn't roll another shield or you couldn't place two hoods, at the end of that round, Right, and it would move down one. So now the next round would start, and you'd roll your action dice. Uh, you could put two hoods on there. Now, it's not one of these and one of those. It's these two or these two. So you would need the two hoods to resolve this trap. And one thing to remember about traps is the dice aren't locked on a trap card. You can if you wanted to, if you don't think that you're going to resolve it or if you, th you really need to re-roll this dice on the next turn, then you could take it up, put it in the regroup, and then on next uh, next round, uh, roll this dice. So, 
To resolve this card before it affects the group, you need either two shields or two hoods. Either of those would resolve this trap card. And let's say you couldn't resolve it. So you rolled your actions and you got one shield. And then you got to the next round. And you could only roll and make one hood. Well, at the end of that round, it would move off. These would go to the regroup pile. And then you would resolve the effects of this trap. Which, again, is if not avoided or halted, one damage to both frontline characters. So these two frontline characters, the fighter and the cleric, would take a point of damage. And then this would be placed in the discard pile. Now, the traps with an asterisk. So let's say we have this card, the gelatinous cube. Now, the way this works is it's going to stay in this area, right? You're going to have to do the same results to uh, resolve the card. And in this case, with a gelatinous cube, you need a hood and daggers or two weapons either from the fighter or the barbarian or two weapons from the cleric or paladin. It's either of these three, not any combination of the three. So one round you might have a cleric's mace and then you might have a, a sword. And like again, if the round ends, you don't move it down, it stays right where it is, but actions are going to be taken from this. So if not destroyed, both frontline characters take a point of damage. So let's say the round went through, these two would take a point of damage. Then next round, you don't happen to get any of these to resolve. So then the next round finishes, they're going to take another point of damage each. So this one's pretty scary is because it's going to stay in the game until you resolve it, period. Or you lose your front two characters. So, and in this case, let's say you rolled your dagger and then you rolled your hood. That would finally resolve it. And then all these would go into the regroup and then that would go into the discard pile. So that's the function of trap cards, how they come into the game, how you resolve them, or how they affect your group. Um, like I said, there's 10 of them in the game. Um, working on creating some more. Um, but one card in particular, I think there's two, is the one that can throw you in the dungeon. Now this snake pit, and there's I think one more. The one thing about this is, if you don't resolve this in two rounds, one frontline character is placed in the dungeon. And the way that works is, so let's say you couldn't resolve it, it comes down here. You would roll a four-sided dice, and it'd be one, two, three, four. So you roll a one. The fighter gets placed in the dungeon. So you have to take the fighter die. The red dice is the fighter dice. Just like the black one is the thief, the, the blue one is the mage, and the yellow one's the cleric. So he gets placed in the dungeon. If he's in the dungeon, his card comes completely off the board, and his red die goes into where he's shown that he's in the dungeon. Now, any time you roll any action dice that are that pertain to a, a fighter, they have no effect. They immediately go in the regroup, unless you can re-roll them with blessing or a function of the cleric. And to get him out of the dungeon, you need these character dice. So if you rolled and you had your one hood, right, and then you got. Uh, i roll again, and you need the main character image, so now you've got a mage and a thief, and you're able to rescue. So this guy now comes in the regroup, these go in the regroup, and you've rescued your fighter, and then on the following round, you would take the fighter card, put it back onto the board, move back his health track, and he's ready to go. Okay, so that's what happens when you have a character that gets thrown into the dungeon. I think there's two of those that can affect the party and throw them in throw them in the dungeon. There's one or two I have to look, but so that's how the dungeon um, trap affects the party. And uh, I hope um, that was uh, informative 
and give you a little better idea of uh, how you incorporate traps in, in the game and play, them, uh, play against them during gameplay. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave comments uh, down below the video in the comment line. And again, if you have any questions or things that you want me to show you in other instruct instructional videos, let me know and I'll create videos on it. Okay? Thanks for watching.